All right, so this is a video going over um, this review thing. Maybe some of the highlights here. So let me try this out. Uh, make it a little brighter. Boom, boom. All right. Okay, so first of all, we've got a word problem. Um, Kiki just got a job trying to save up money to buy a car. She has 120 initial deposit and uh, $20 per week. Remember when you see that per... Uh, it should help you remember that you need a slope and an intercept. Okay, so when it says write an equation that can be used to represent, instead of y equals mx plus b, I'm going to say y equals 20x plus your starting amount of 120. So your slope has the word per on it, your initial amount has 120. Now I always like to say, um, what each letter means. So in this problem, this is per week, so the weeks goes with 20, goes with the 20, so X is weeks. Okay, and that means Y must mean total um, money saved up. Okay, um, in the savings account. Okay, so what is the slope? The slope is $20. Uh, well, the slope is 20 and it represents $20 per week to save in this situation. What's the y-intercept? 120, which stands for $120 for initial deposit in an account. Sometimes an account requires you to have a certain amount to start. Um, use the equation to find out how much she needs after 12 weeks. The only thing you got to do is decide, does that go in for X or is that going for Y? Well, good thing I wrote it up here because that makes it a really easy question. That's going to go in for X. You know, sometimes a problem will do the other one. So I'm going to say Y equals 20 times 12 plus 120. Okay, and then 20 times 12 is going to be probably 240, right? Yep. So 240 plus 120 is 360. Now make sure word problems get word answers. So 360 what? Well, $360 is your total amount. Right? Word problems should always get word answers. Okay, so does this table represent a linear or form a linear pattern? Let's see. Um, I like to see what does the x go up by every time. So minus 2, minus 2 looks like it's going down. All right, now if those weren't the same, then you can't really even tell. But since they are the same and this is going up by 3, be careful on that it's actually gaining since it's getting less negative. Um, you just got to make sure that you remember rate of change is a fancy way of saying slope. So we're going to say rise over run, which would be your change in y's over change in x's. So when I look at it, I want to make sure that 3 is on top and then negative 2 is on bottom because it's y's over x's. That's my rate of change. And it is constant. All right, so on to this problem, which says solve for y. Ignore this thing. This was actually supposed to be over here. I had a printing issue, so I have I don't know. But anyway, solve for y means get y by itself. So if I'm attacking this problem, I want to get the x's out of there first. And I'll have 3y equals negative 2x minus 15. Um, I could have written negative 15 minus 2x, and it would have been totally fine. And now y is almost by itself, but you got to divide by 3. One thing to watch out for is make sure you divide every single piece by 3. Um, and if the numbers divide, do it. Like 15 divided by 3 is 5. So actually do the division. This one's solve for y. I could have done the same thing solving for x. I would just get the 3y over there first. Uh, okay, so now on to this one. Solve an inequality. Now, an inequality works just like an equal sign. Remember, unless you multiply or, add, multiply or divide by a negative. 
So I'd treat this one just like 7x plus 12 equals 5. So my first goal is to take away 12. So now I have the 7x by itself. That doesn't flip your sign, right? And then dividing by 7 is totally fine. I don't need to flip my symbol because I didn't divide by a negative. Now it doesn't matter that the answer is negative. That's not a big deal. It's just when you multiply or divide by a negative is the only time that symbol flips directions. So that's my answer. If I wanted to graph it, I could graph it like with a negative 1. Open circle, and I will shade. See how the alligator mouth opens towards the x? So I want x's to be bigger. So I'd shade that way. That would be my graph. Um, okay. Now down here, we're to absolute value problems. So one's an equal sign, one's a greater than. So we'll deal with the equal one first. So if these equal, and it's by itself, you split it in two problems. Okay. Now if there, if this wasn't alone, you would have to like undo stuff. Like if there's a plus five, your first move would be to undo it. The only time you can split it is once the absolute value is by itself or isolated. And when that happens, you just copy it down, don't change what's inside, and one of them equals the regular 14, or it equals the negative 14, because you don't know what was inside here, whether it's positive or negative, because absolute value makes whatever's inside positive. So I add 10, divide by 2, x is 12, or I'm going to add 10, be careful when you do this one on this side, because you get negative 4, divide by 2, and x is uh, negative 2. There's two answers. All right, this one's a little weirder because greater than is going to be like, remember we had go la, go la? Greater than is or. So I already know in the end it's going to look like an or. And if you remember, ors look like this in the end where they go out to the sides. So I hope my picture looks like that in the end. So. Is it isolated? Yeah, there's no like minus three or two times out in front. So since this guy is by himself, it splits into two separate equations. And once again, I don't ever mess with what's inside the absolute value signs. So either 3x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 20, or, see how I have the word or because GOLA, um, or 3x plus 5 is less than or equal to negative 20. So not only do I change the, sim the sign, but I also change the symbol. Check that out. Make sure you notice that because it's the opposite of what you see there. And then I solve it just the same way. Take away 5. 3x is greater than or equal to negative. Oh, not negative, sorry. 3x is greater than or equal to 15 because I take away 5 from there. Then divide by 3, and you get x is greater than or equal to 5. Or you have, let's solve this, take 5 away, negative 25, and this isn't going to be the prettiest number. Uh, if you wanted to know what that was, you can just like divide it on your calculator and say, oh, that's about negative 8.3 repeating. Now that's kind of useful because if you had to graph this answer, which sometimes you do, you're going to have 5 up here and negative 8.3 here. And then they're both closed circles. And or shade out. So it looks like that. Awesome. Or you could say I want x's to be on the greater side for this 5, and I want x to be on the less side for the negative 1. All right, almost there. Um, write the solution of this number line in interval notation. So to me, that looks like all the x is smaller than negative 2. Hopefully you can see those are negatives there. The printing didn't come out great. So I know the farthest left this goes, it goes way out here, is negative infinity. I always use a parenthesis on negative infinity. And to the right, the biggest number is negative 2. And since it's a closed circle, 
I use a bracket. Remember, closed circles go with brackets, open circles go with parentheses. Um, right, something like that. Okay. Uh, graph each of these lines provided. Okay, so we want x is smaller than negative 4 or greater than or equal to 2. So smaller would be open circle, shade left, and this is closed circle, shade right, because it's greater than. Okay, and now here's an and, so it should be between them. Here's 5 and 0. We have open circles on both, because they're both less than or greater than. And it's got to be on the smaller side of the 5, the bigger side of the 0. They overlap in the middle. That's what an or looks like. That's what an and looks like. All right, now a student's trying to solve an absolute value inequality below, but made a mistake along the way. Look at the student's work and identify their mistake. Uh, correct it. All right, so let's check it out. They got this by itself. They split into two parts. And remember, uh, since it's a less than, it's an and. So I like that they wrote and. So far, the student's looking pretty good. You copy it down. Here, oh, I see the mistake. See how they flipped the symbol, but they didn't change that to a negative 9? All right, so they forgot the negative 9 when the problem split. They remembered to change the symbol, but they forgot the easier part, I think, of flipping that. So the rest of this is wrong. This is probably right. Yeah, it looks good. So let's do it the right way. So recognizing mistakes is a good thing. So since it's isolated, I'm going to write it once with just out the absolute value signs. And the other time, I'm going to not only flip my symbol, but I'm also going to flip the sign of what's over there. That's what they forgot. And then we go ahead and solve it. Um, 2x is less than 10 x is less than 5. And this is an and, right? And here I add 1. Be careful when you add 1 here. 2x is greater than negative 8. x is greater than um, negative 4. I didn't have to flip my symbol because I was dividing by a positive 2. Then I can graph that. I know it's going between a negative 4 and a 5. Open, open and um, shade between them. Because it's bigger than that, smaller than that, or do you just remember ands look like that? All right, hope that helps. Um, review all this good stuff, and I hope you do awesome on the quiz. Later.